Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Good morning, still on my side of the country, but uh, welcome to ITN Live for this Sunday, August the 9th. I'm your host, James Hicks. Uh, today we have a, another very special guest, special guest to me, uh, my cousin-in-law. I guess that's how we should officially call it. Yeah, my cousin-in-law. Uh, Michelle Hicks is joining us today. Michelle is an educator. She's based in the East Coast. Um, much of her focus in education is around TVI, Teachers for the Visually Impaired, um, a very niche uh, focus from an education perspective, but I think something that's incredibly interesting and something very relevant and really wanted to have her come on today and talk about, you know, what's going on in her field of work and her field of study talk a little bit about accessibility and education for blind and visually uh, visually impaired students and and then maybe let's go into kind of what legislative and curriculum advancements that she'd like to see implemented for TVI so without further ado ladies and gentlemen Michelle Hicks Michelle what's going on girl nothing much just um having a nice day this good afternoon everybody it's afternoon over here on the coast and just chilling, have, have um, cook out with my kids, and now I'm ready for this. Oh, see, there you go. You start with the cookout. You make me jealous here on, on the West Coast. Y'all probably got something going. Uh, you know, your husband was probably, like you said, he was out there on his tractor, cutting the yard, making everything look right. That's all, that's all good. That's all good. Yes, he was. He had a good time today cutting, his, cutting on his tractor. And just <laughs> for everyone out there, we live in the suburbs. And we have a postage stamp of a front yard, but wow. my husband doesn't have one of those, you know, little riding lawnmowers. No, he has a full on um, International Harvester track farm. Tractor. <laughs> I, I, I'm glad you made that clear, too. Right. And I mean, so this folks, you know, this is just setting precedence for the folks that, that I'm dealing with here. Lord, Lord, pray for me. Pray for Michelle. Yes. Uh, right, she's got. <laughs> You know, quarter acre or whatever, nice, nice house. You know, little, little lawn, little something to take care of. But my cousin, Alan, show does have a full on farm equipped, heavy duty tractor. Probably takes him two passes to cut the entire yard. And then, Lord have mercy, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm going to wish nothing but the best for you, but you know, it, the man is happy. He's doing what he likes to do. If, and, and you know, if he stays out of your way, then, you know, even better, <laughs> right? Even better. <laughs> yes. And it's one of those things where I know where he is. That, so oh, if he there you go. To cut random patches of field. <laughs> There are other things he could be into. So. That's true. That's true. That, a, a, amen for that. He's on lockdown, but he's uh, he, you know, he, he's he's cutting the grass. He's keeping everything nice and tight. That's all. Yes. So let, let let's get into the topic today. Uh, first of all, again, I'm gonna say thank you for for joining me today. And this is something that I'm interested in. Just again, because it's, as, as the, you know, the mantra for ITN for Infotainment News is timely, relevant news of the day. And I really think mm -hmm. that what you mm -hmm. focus on, again, from a TVI perspective, teachers for visually impaired, start off by telling us how and why you got into this particular field yourself. Okay, well, um, I was blessed with growing up in a multi-generational household. So at one point, I had my great-grandmother, my grandparents, my mother, and my sister and I. Um, all in the same household. So my grandfather lost his vision. He, um, during World War II, when he was in the army, they told him to make sure he read all the books he was ever gonna read because he was gonna lose his sight due to glaucoma. Oh, wow. um, and as a young, as a young person, I only knew him as blind. As you know, by the time I came around, he, that's all I ever knew that he was blind. Mm -hmm. But he had these books in his study and they were full, they were, there were no words in them, there were no pictures, but there were all these bumps in them and dots. And I remember just rubbing my hand over them and just loving the way they felt. I had no idea that that was Braille at the time. Um, but fast forward, um, my mother-in-law also um, lost her vision due to diabetes. And I remember one time sitting in the, um, 
in the kitchen with her and she was listening to an audio book. But the speed she was listening was something that I'm like, can you understand what they're saying? <laughs> and she could. And so um, when I went to, uh, when I was an undergrad, I became a special education teacher. So for most of my career, 20 years of my career, I worked with students who have learning disabilities and um, behavior disorders. And I had at least two children, students who were who did have a visual impairment. And one of their guys was visually impaired. She was encouraging me. She said that there is a huge need um, for teachers of the visually impaired. And she encouraged myself and a few other teachers to try to um, get certified. And at the time, we needed to spend two weeks away at the School for the Deaf and the Blind. And at that wow. point, um, my children were little. All three of them were little. So I couldn't have left um, my husband alone with three young children. Yeah, don't do don't that. Lord, I'm don't do that. I, 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 I'm just, we, we, we won't go any further into that. We'll stay, we'll stay focused, but yeah, don't do that. Right. And so I did take one course, Braille, and I've always loved Braille. Um, and that's why I you know, made the connection of what those books were from my grandfather. But fast forward a few more years, um, a friend of mine had, you know, called me who finished her TBI. She said, Michelle, you know, your um, county needs two TBIs. This is the time you need to go and do this. You have a guaranteed job already in your system. You just need to go take the classes. And at this point there had, um, there was a grant through George Mason um, University and there was something called the, um, Virginia a Consortium for Sensory Impairment, where they were paying part of um, the part of the way for us to for educators in Virginia to become certified to teach visual impairment and other sensory impairments like hearing loss that is also a, they don't have a lot of teachers. So I was able to do all the coursework th online, so I didn't have oh, to nice. leave nice. my house, right. um, so I could work. And then I could come home and take classes. So mm -hmm. it was the things happen. I know God is really good to me and things happen when they're supposed to happen. So I started taking classes. My um, district, you know, moved me over from being an inclusion math teacher to um, working with students of the visually impaired. And I absolutely love it. I'm not sure. Um, back before the world ended, I know. Um, good morning, America. <laughs> before the world ended, I love that. <laughs> Um, had done a small segment on, you know, the fact that there are, there is a, a nationwide shortage of teachers of the visually impaired. So anyone out there listening, we need you. And it's a wonderful, wonderful, you know, teaching position. I love it. I, I will actually, yeah, iterate that as well, right? I mean, I mean, you signed up to do the hard work, but you signed up to do the necessary work. Right. I, I mean, love all the teachers, love everyone in education. My, my wife started in the classroom as well. And, you know, you started in the classroom and that role, that occupation, that position, I couldn't do it. Look, I, I don't have enough patience just for myself. Right. But, so, but and and we, we don't we won't even talk about, you know, the fact that you're not compensated financially as much as you is justified and what you should be. But. You know, to go into a totally different field just based on situations that you've had with your family, right? You, you saw your grandfather, you saw your, your, your mother-in-law go through these trials and go through these situations. And you said, you know what? I want to go help youngsters and kids that are yeah. going through this as well because you know that they're having a tougher time. At, just being a kid and going through school is tough anyway, right? But, but when you have kind of these odds stacked against you as well, then, you know, that, that adds a little extra weight on the shoulder. So... Kudos and shouts out to you for again doing that hard work, signing up to do it. And you say it's been like your your twentieth year or so in this particular field. This um is I've been this is my twenty fifth year of teaching. Um, wow. twenty as working with students who are learning disabled and behavior disordered, and then the last five with children um with blindness and visual impairment. Okay, okay, so. What's changed in that time frame, right? Have um, wow. resources <laughs> have, uh, in, in, <laughs> well, yeah, besides, wow. as you say, when, when the world has stopped, 
But what, yeah. what what has changed, I guess, in, in terms of you know some of the accessibility and the tools that you have to, available to you from when, from when you started? What 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 do you see now in 2019, 2020 that you have as capabilities that you can give to your to your students? Technology has been uh, just a, such a blessing. Mm-hmm. I worked with a student when I started working with him. He was in fifth grade. And at that time, he had something, we call it a CCTV, um, but it's not really a closed circuit television. What it is, Mm -hmm. is more of an electronic magnifier. So you can put books and papers under this and it magnifies it so it's nice and big because he's low vision so he can see. So he would sit behind this thing in the back of the room because that's where the plug was. Yeah. And he would do work and his assistant um, would like take notes or tell him what, you know, they're doing. But one of the, but he, and he was very passive in his learning. It happened to him. So um, one of the things that I wanted and we got, especially because we're transitioning to middle school, was something called an EBOT. And I call him Edgar. I mean, Edgar, but Edgar the <laughs> EBOT was a distance magnifier. So imagine like a document camera. So it's for camera. So it would look, Edgar looks at the board and then sends a wireless, um, to his wireless app on his iPad so he can see in real time what the teacher is doing. So if she's writing a problem on the board, if she is showing, um, you know, a beaker or whatever, he could see it. And the day, James, the day we got him that, yeah. I almost cried because he said, that's what she's doing in the front of the room. Oh, <laughs> this was a fifth it, grader. Was like a, it was like one of those, right? I mean, just a whole new one of those aha moments. Okay. He was a fifth grader and never, ever had known what was going on. You know, he couldn't see, visually see what the teacher and the other students were doing at the front of the room. So it was a game changer for him because as we moved into middle school, he was able to take notes. He was able to see what everyone else was doing. And like I said, right to his iPad. And it was amazing. Um, I remember one time I sat with him and he was copying notes because we want everyone, I want, all my students, we want everyone to be as independent as possible. So he asked me, well, Miss Hicks, can you take my notes? And I said, no. And he, I mean, he gave me a death glare. <laughs> and I said, I think you need to hurry up then. And he was able to, and so he was started taking notes. And I asked him, because I took a picture of what, you know, the board was saying, just in case he missed anything or a backup mm-hmm. copy of notes. But I wanted him to know the responsibility was on him. And so I asked him, like, the next slide, I'm like, do you need anything? And he said, I got it. (laughs) (laughs) He was a the expectation was you need to take notes like everybody else. So I remember this was sixth grade. So fast forward to ninth grade this past year, we were um, I was in class with him again. And the teacher was showing notes to this to the um, the children, to the students. And he was sitting there doing nothing. And I was like, what you doing? And he's like, I'm done. So other students with vision <laughs> who had nothing wrong with them were still count, you know, copying word for word. And I looked at his notes and he did what a good student does. He looked, he read the sentence and then That's put cool. it down in his own words. That's cool. And I'm like, That's cool. We got this. <laughs> so, yeah. Now, now education is fun. Now, you know, that students enjoying learning instead of becoming a statistic who may have been left behind, right? Because right? you know, th- th- that teacher, no fault of theirs, they probably got 20, 30 other students in the classroom. So, you know, at the be- when he was in sixth grade, but can't go and necessarily. We want them to, but can't necessarily go and focus on that one individual, but. Now right. we got the technology. Now they're able to see the the math problems on the board. That that's that's a cool. That's a pretty good story. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> so, so okay. Now let's throw the curve into it uh, and talk about as you say again, the world has come to a close or come to a halt. What are you doing now? I mean, are you Woo! 
<laughs> yeah, you know, let's sit back and talk about it now. You know, what differences are you doing preparing classrooms, your peers, uh, you know, other teachers, and maybe even some students if you've talked to them? How are you preparing to embrace learning during COVID? Well, that was, I mean, COVID is, you know, this was completely new to everyone. So yeah. we were all thrust into a distance learning situation. I, one of my um, guests that I had on my podcast that I had um, interviewed was a college student who is studying to be a teacher of the visually impaired, and she herself is visually impaired. And she was saying the struggle that a lot of students with blindness and visual impairment, when they go to high you know, college and, you know, a after um, graduating, they struggle with the technology because there's it's there's a lot of difficult access as well as just learning new things. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make sure, you know, that my students were able to be independent. And instead of facing this issue when you're in college, when you don't have a TBI, let's work on it now while you do have the support of the TBI. And a lot of like <laughs> the same student I was working with, um, he had geometry this year. And I said, we, I'm sorry, we had geometry this year. And I'm, I'm including him. And bless her heart, he had a wonderful teacher. But when they were recording videos, they were, she made videos and she said, okay, you're going to go here and make sure you click this. And then you're going to go here and then you're going to do that. And so he had no idea where here was. He had yeah. no idea where there was. And it wasn't like she was trying to be, you know, she was a wonderful woman, so wonderful teacher, but it's, we, you don't necessarily always are mindful. Yeah, of, out of sight, out of mind kind of thing, right? It, yeah. Right. Mm. So I would have him watch the videos, her teacher videos in geometry, because that's what they're supposed to do. And then I would ask him, because we were over Zoom and so, um, and over on our iPads mm. and he would say, I would ask him, did he understand what she was, you know, what he had to do? And he said, no, I have no idea. So then I would have to go and watch the video. And I am not a math person. You can ask my husband and my children. <laughs> I am not a math person. So I would have to then watch the videos. And then I would have to go and explain them to my student. So that's why I said we had geometry. Um, <laughs> and some of the difficulties like again, he uses an iPad, um, but things like Google Classroom, you can't pinch and zoom on Google Classroom. So when the teacher oh, wow. is giving okay. information, yeah. the notes of like what you're supposed to do, that's inaccessible to him. So instead of him being able to be an independent student, he had to wait for me, you know, for our Zoom time in order for him to be able to, you know, understand what he needed to do. So those are the kind of things that now is the time to learn the accessibility features yeah. of things like Canva. Canvas, I know they're like um, switching platforms where I'm living, I mean, my county from Google Classroom to Canvas. So it's now time to learn those things. Um, just preparing my students for self-advocacy because again, you're home. If no one's going to make you do something, and you're a kid, if no one's going to make you do anything, you're not going to do it. So That's if true. something yeah. is difficult, then it's then they're not then people are going to less likely to do it. I had a young lady that I worked with, and they had labeled her. She was visually impaired, but they also labeled her emotionally disabled. Mm -hmm. And when I met her, she was a sweetheart. Um, and here in Virginia, we have the standards of learning. We did not do common course. We have the standards of learning. So she needed like X amount of credits, probably like I think 13 or 14 verified credits in order to you know, graduate. This was her okay. second year as a senior and she had zero. And I'm like, I remember sitting in the, the meeting and I am very positive and very much try, but I'm like, should we look at GED? Because there is no way in the world to say, girl. You're not going to catch up. Yeah, you're not, you're not oh, going to make it. You know, yeah. at, you know, in one year. Yeah. Well, we, she and I worked 
you know, we started working and I'm like, well, why weren't you doing the work on the computer? They had put her on the computer to do work. And she said, Miss Hicks, I can't see it. She couldn't see the, the, the cursor. And she hated wow. computers because she couldn't see the mouse. So there are accessibility features built into computers. And I said, give me a shot. And I was able to teach her how to, to make the cursor big, how to make it, um, it'll do a little thing as far as like a little flash of where the cursor is. And she was able to be like, oh, James, she walked across that stage in June. Because she passed all the time. You know, that that's that's struck me when you said that. I mean, yeah, so we've got all these mobile devices. We got phones, laptops, desktops, and all this, and they have these accessibility tabs, yeah. Should not take those for granted and should be aware of those. But you brought up something and I and I almost wonder, I don't know if I'm gonna put you on the spot here, but I touched on it in, in the intro. From a legislation perspective, is anything being done to not forget these students, right? I mean, is, is there some bills or some, some uh, documents in the halls of Congress or legislative or the representatives that specifically address the visually impaired and the blind and education and things of that? Well, we just finished the, um, back in July, we just had the 30th anniversary of the of American with Disabilities Act. And yeah. within that act, our things not only need to be accessible, like physical, like getting into buildings and having ramps, yeah. you need to have, things need to be visually, websites need to have, there's a criteria that all websites are supposed to, supposed to, um, you know, use and be, you know, and have, so the laws are there on the book. Yeah. But not everyone adheres to those because it takes a little bit more. Just like if you think about it, like you'll have a physical building and the ramp is all the way in the back in the alley. And just because there's a ramp doesn't mean that it is and it's accessible doesn't mean that it's user friendly. Doesn't mean, you know we were in bless our hearts this we were in a school that was built probably in the 40s or 50s and i prayed every time we got in the elevator i mean it was an elevator and it was accessible but i was like this would i don't know if we're gonna make it up up, up the stairs you know i mean up the elevator yeah so there are so the american with disability act tells us and tells businesses that everything needs to be accessible but not everyone does it. Well, you know, I'm sitting there, as you were talking, I'm sitting here writing notes. I will make sure that infotainment news has accessibility functionality and features turned on. I, again, not, and that's, that's really why we're having this conversation, right? It was never an oversight, but again, it, it's something that we're, everyone is not as aware of as it should be, right? Let, let, let's be cognizant and let's be compassionate to our, our fellow brother and sister. And, you know, if, yeah, the ramps are great. Yeah, the railings are good, but uh, accessibility to foes with, with, with hearing loss, vision loss, uh, whatever the case may be, let, let's make sure that they have equal rights or equal access to facilities and services as well. So, yeah, I, I was literally, I, I'm literally writing down some notes right now to make sure that my site is accessible. So, I've got homework. Yeah, go ahead. And a lot of it is things that are super simple. Like I had teachers who they'll give a worksheet and I'm like, this isn't, can we get an electronic copy? Because again, yeah. my students can take it on their iPad and make it bigger for them. Um, if it's a Word document that they created, oh my goodness, do you know you can select all the copy and change it from a 12 point font to a 20 point font? And it doesn't, <laughs> and that's completely free and easy. Um, so those are the kind of things, and it's not, and I know people, you know, I truly believe that there's good, you know, they're good in people and people are good. It's just, they, people don't know what yeah. they don't know. Exactly, exactly. And, and it's, yeah. yeah. So it's one of those things, I know I've had, um, my, my parents, I was in an IEP meeting and the mother was just so stressed out because her child, who um, have been a preemie, because that's often um, when preemies are given oxygen, it can damage their eyes. Mm. 
she and she was concerned that her, you know her child was struggling and when i she had an iphone and when i posted, and she's like you know he's always so close to it i said can i see your phone and she gave me your phone i went to the accessibility you know um you know part made the font bigger made every and she was like i didn't know she started crying because she thought she would she had done something wrong i said no darling you, you just don't know what you don't know yeah. and if you don't need those things the james the saddest part again i work with students and one of the things with the vision field you can work from birth all the way um till death i mean because eventually if we live long enough you're gonna lose your you're gonna lose some vision and you're gonna need me right. but um <laughs> So many times our older our older members of our communities will go to the doctor, find out that they might have diabetes or a glaucoma and they're losing their vision and that's the end. And they think that's the end. They aren't able to cook. They aren't able to do their um, um, the hobbies that they like. But there are low low vision devices that will help you do anything and everything if yeah. you don't know and no one tells you then you sit and people sit in the just sit and in the dark and lose their vision because no one has ever told them that they can get a magnifier at yeah. home they can get you know large print um oh goodness like measuring cups and it's okay. just it's yeah, yeah. bad well, you, you know, I'll, I'll put it back on the screen here. Um, my dad is watching and he chimed in with this, this statement earlier and he's currently going through treatment for glaucoma. So he's at least he's definitely taking advantage of services that are available to him. So to, to Hicks Senior there, don't don't sit in the dark, brother. You know, you, you, you got resources and you can always call Michelle. She, she, she's got all Definitely. the insights to, to help. Um, let's let's pivot slightly and let's talk you, you already talked a little bit about it but let's talk about your podcast which is now in its successful was that second season i've, I've listened to a handful of episodes talk to us a little bit about um what you're doing with that right the folks that you're interviewing the topics that you're you're, you're, you're having and uh where others can actually access that as well well my podcast is called tbi talks with michelle and like the little thing it says, it's the aim is to support teachers of the visually impaired. Um, we had talked about that there's a shortage. There are, there's a generation of TBIs that are retiring now. And the field is being filled, which is to a point, which is um, with younger, not younger, newer <laughs> TBIs. But that generation, we're losing their information, their knowledge. And really, we want to make sure that kind of we do what we I wanted to build a community of practice. I wanted to build a, a support as a TBI. I am an itinerant teacher, so it means I travel from school to school. So okay. I spend a lot of time in my car. So last year, I discovered podcasts. I never had I'm not really a talk radio person and I didn't like I didn't really I listened to podcasts. But I found a podcast on sewing, which was, I um, love to sew. It's a great podcast. And it was amazing because as traveling from school to school, I was learning sewing techniques and I was learning new patterns to, you know, um, fill out. I was like, I wonder if there's a team, like, you know, one for teachers with visually impaired. So right. I, um, I just search on, you know, um, Apple podcast and there really wasn't anything that grabbed that stuck out to me. And so I'm one of those people where I'm like, hmm, I wonder if I could do that. So um, <laughs> I decided to create this podcast and one of the, to help the next generation of teachers. One of the things, I don't know, James, if you knew, um, Alan taught for you, my husband, Alan, your cousin, taught for mm -hmm. a year. He yeah. taught um, and he was a really good first year teacher. He connected with the kids but he wasn't given the support from the administration and from the people in his department. So he taught for one year. And research shows a lot of new teachers, because he was a career switcher, so a lot of new teachers, a lot of career switchers, 
um, will stay in the classroom for two to three years. And then they leave, they run in droves. We're losing teachers because they're not given support. So since I hated what they did to my husband, I hated it, mm-hmm. hated it, hated it. As a classroom teacher, I always sought out the new teachers in special ed. I'm like, come on, I'm your mentor. I'm not getting any money. I'm not getting any professional development points. But it's not going. You're not. It's not going to happen on my watch. We're we'll it to my husband. So come Hello. on, you're going to learn how to. You know, you need to have a question. Ask me, because like for him, they had his the person who was evaluating him was also his mentor. So if you have a dumb question, wow, hmm. you're not going to want to go to the person who's going to evaluate you. Yeah. So I'm like. Come talk to me. I had wonderful mentees there. Uh, both of like both two of my favorite ones have you know flourished in the classroom. Once moved down to admin, but they're still in the education field. So I love my mentees. I love my PIC um, if she's watching. But so that's what I wanted to do for TBIs because again we spend a lot of times in our cars. Let's you know learn something going in between schools. So um, I have, I really believe in connections with people and building, you know, a community and building friends. So I had a physical group of teachers of the visually impaired in the, in several counties around where I, you know, where I work. And we called us, I called us the VI squad. I even made us t-shirts. And um, got a little swag for the for the crew too. Huh? Okay. Yes. <laughs> so um, so we would be able to call and like, hey, you know, have you ever um gotten, you know, um read aloud for the SAT for a visually mm-hmm. impaired kid? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I did that last week. You know, because with teachers of the visually impaired, I can work from two all the way up to twenty two. With two year olds, all the way up to twenty two. Okay. So. If I don't, if I don't, if I haven't had a student who's a senior, then I don't know, you know, some of the things that seniors, you know, need. But I can, I could call and text, you know, my friend, um, and to just ask a question. So that's the kind of community that I wanted to build with my podcast. So I've been having, been so blessed um, with just talking to TVIs. My first interview was with my best, like my coworker, one of my best buddies. So I knew she wasn't going to say no. <laughs> but often, you know, when you're meeting with your friends, you're talking about your families and how you're doing. But to have a focused conversation about our field, yeah. I have learned more. Just, I mean, it's just amazing. So then I just started branching out and asking, you know, random TVIs, you know, so I've had um, TVIs from across the country. I've had some in California. I've, um, I've just, I have an interview, I just had an interview with someone in Oregon. Um, So I love being able to talk to different people with different experiences. And that's what it all is. We're we're learning, we're learning from each other. Definitely. That's that's amazing. So, um, you know, if anything is positive come out of this whole lockdown thing right and it kind of we, as we were saying off off screen i've been able to lock in at, and get the uh, my, my network going but the fact that you're continuing to focus on on your podcast and able to reach out to folks globally right so i mean yeah you know not just in your five mile radius or whatever the case may be but you you know you, you've got west coast east coast north and south so i think that's that's amazing that's phenomenal it's, it's all about the community so um, I'll keep this on here and I'll definitely add it in the show notes so folks can subscribe to um, TVI Talks with Michelle. And what's interesting, you know how um, Apple, well, the where I focus my podcast, yeah. they'll do, you know, demographics. So yeah. I got so excited. I have a listener in Tanzania. I'm like, Love that is it. so cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. She has been listening for it like since the beginning, and I'm like, that is so cool. So we have like I have listeners in Tanzania. Um, I have one in um, in Asia because you know it'll tell you like where like what continent right. people are listening. I have someone in Europe, and it's just like that's just 
amazing to me. All right. So share this with them and get their address and send them some some swag. <laughs> I have to. I have to send them swag. I'm you like, know, oh, send, 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 send them a t-shirt or, or something, right? And then have them, and then you can post that on, on, on Instagram or something like that. <laughs> uh, so let me let me ask you this. That's that's a lot of stuff you're doing, right? You're 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 teaching possibly kids two to twenty two. You've got three kids. True, they're 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 adults now. Yeah. You got a you got a man outside in the front yard on a tractor that you got to keep an eye on. <laughs> <laughs> Lord knows I do. <laughs> yeah, right. And you went back to school. So talk to us a little bit about grad school because I mean, that's no small chore, right? Just talk to us a little bit about the time constraint of that and and how how that's going right now and what and what your field of study is for the, for your for your master's or for your graduate program. Well, actually, um, I am going. I would start not this next week, but the following week. So on the seventeenth, classes start, and I will be pursuing um, my PhD in special education. So, I heard that. Hold on, hold on. Let's say, say that. Say say that one more one more again. Hold on, <laughs> one more again. Let me, I want to make sure that we get get that uh, let that resonate. Say, what are you gonna do again, Michelle? I will be starting my um, coursework for pursuing my PhD in special education. So, um, and thank you. I have wanted to get my PhD since I was an undergrad. I went to Hampton University, and at that point, I was surrounded by wonderful professors and I knew again at that point that I wanted to help prepare the next generation of special education teachers. Mm. So money is always a thing. <laughs> and um, <laughs> you know and when I graduated from college I wanted to start. I was so tired, you know, kind of tired of school, so I wanted to start so we, I graduated in May. Alan and I got married on the 19th. We're going to celebrate 25 years um, mm. in two weeks, in a few weeks, um, or a week. Ten days, actually. Woohoo! Oh, Lord, she, so, don't, she don't know when the anniversary is. See what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, I got nothing and, to do with it. Um, and I start, like, so we got married on Saturday, and I had to report to new teacher training on Monday. We did not have a honeymoon. Um, wow. And by... I think October, I found out we, we were pregnant expecting our first child. Yeah. So life just took up. And it was wonder, and it's a wonderful life. I've loved my life. Um, and I, when I went back to, um, to get my master's, I got my master's in reading. The kids were young. I think they were, it was 20, um, um, 07, 06, 07. Okay. And Alan did a really good job of taking, you know, taking over, helping, you know, making sure, you know, so I was able to go to class. So that was hard, but it was fine. So now, like you said, I have three adults. I don't have, children, I have three adults. And it's funny, James, um, they had sent an email around about a program that would um, call the Prize Scholar Scholarship, and that there was a grant looking for encouraging teachers to go into, to get their PhDs in special education because there's a shortage. And I got the email, you know, you get like tons of emails hmm. a day. Hmm. I deleted the email because oh I had time. Goodness. I didn't they, even they try read to give it. You, they tried to give you some free money, free training, and you know, you just, you just <laughs> file out in the circular bin, didn't you? Oh my and Lord. And I just deleted it. And I never delete email. And I just, and I just deleted it. Um, and my friend, co-worker, my friend Crystal, she sent me like the next day, this is for you. And so I was like, hey, and then I opened it and read what it was. I'm like, oh, this is for me. <laughs> <laughs> and, was, um, and so I just decided, let's do this. Let's try. And things have, you know, I've been, since undergrad, I was terrified. I'm not a good test taker as far as standardized testing. Yeah. I was terrified of the GRE <laughs> and I'm um, from undergrad. So since 1990, I was terrified of the GRE. Luckily, when I went to get my master's, I could do the Miller's and Maladies test. But yeah. the test was what they needed to get into Virginia Commonwealth University for this program. 
And when I met with a phone interview, they gave me a target score. So not only do I have to take this test, I have to get I have to get a target <laughs> score. You got you got to get pretty high. I don't know. Okay. So I was terrified, but I was just like, I, all I can do is try. So I within a week you know, registered for it and took it. I studied a little bit, but I mean, it was a week. I missed it. The mark probably by seven points. Oh. And I was sad. <laughs> and my yeah. husband was he's a, he's a huge encourager. He was just like, Michelle, you always take the test twice. So you'll take it twice. He was like, you'll take it another time. You'll have time. You'll have a whole month to study because, you know, the test is not cheap. So I paid for the first one. He paid for the second, you know, mm. me to take it the second time. And he was just like, you got this. And he, he's like, if you had a week and got that close, imagine after, you know, you have a time to study. And James, there's a way. I mean, I just didn't know that there was a way to study for those tests. And I mm -hmm. studied, I learned, I love my, I love YouTube. YouTube is my like best friend. Uh, and uh, I found video after video on it. I'm like, oh, there's a way to take this test. James, when the score flashed up, because you get your score immediately. Right. I burst into tears. Because I was <laughs> You're like, this, is, this can't be right. These numbers are high right here. Are these numbers right? I love it. <laughs> I, and I'm sure people thought that I was crazy because I was in there sobbing. I was just so <laughs> proud of myself. And I was like, yeah. even if I won't get in the program, I've conquered a fear. Yeah. And that yeah. is what life is about. So I like that story as far as this is, is what I'm supposed to do. So I'm getting my, uh, my I'm going to pursue my PhD. In special education and my focus is going to be visual impairment that's where i'm going to do my research um you know because there's lots of things to research especially now with accessibility all of this is new you know distance learning and doing those kind of things so it's just been a blessing so i'm so excited so, hey, that that's an amazing to... story. Congratulations on that part. That's... So let me. Are, is it is it Hampton or are you going to VCU for your study? I'm going to VCU. Hampton okay. was my, Hampton was okay. my undergrad. Okay. And All it's right. funny Perfect. because when they're asking like, what do you want to do with your degree? One of the things I really want to do with my degree, like I said, I got my um, I learned how to do special ed at Hampton University, which is a historically black college or university, they're saying there's a discrepancy and there's, um, there are less special ed teachers of color that are coming into the field. Well, hmm. at Hampton University, there's no longer a special education department. It vanished. Um, and that's one of the things I really want to do. I want to get that started because you have a whole generation of African-American students who are going to a college who don't even have the opportunity to major in special education or to get endorsed in special education. So that's one of the things I really want to do. Look, I, 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 I'm not going to say anything else. That's, I, I, <laughs> you know, what? That, that, I'm going I'm to leave it right there on cloud nine. Look, you <laughs> phenomenal story about passing your GRE. Uh, little shout out to, to, to Alan there too. You know, we'll give him a couple of cool points there. I, I won't be so hard on him next time I talk to him. You know, <laughs> definitely su supportive man, supportive family. Uh, mm -hmm. And and the fact that, again, you are doing the hard work, planning on going back and giving back to the communities in need. Uh, that that's, that's, a, that's just a great story. And we support you 120%. Uh, Michelle, I thank you for joining me today. Was it? Hope this was fun, right? This was, yes. Good. It was a lot of fun. Good. I mean, I, I, again, it's a, a statement or a, a conversation topic that not everyone is as aware of as we possibly probably should be. We, we know or we've heard of accessibility. We know about certain aspects, ADA. We know about the, the buttons on our phones and on our laptops. But again, how does that affect the student in, in class that's sitting in the middle or the back of the room who damn can't see the chalkboard right and is having issues are there folks that are out there to help that student get better and prepared and and succeed 
And the answer to that obviously is yes. And you are definitely one of those people. So thank you again for everything that you do. Thank you. And I know I'll finish on one thing. I know you're out there, you know, with Google and Facebook and all those people who make apps. Yeah. Accessibility. Remember my babies. Remember those first people with blindness or visual impairments because we need the same access. They need the same access as everyone else. So when you're designing your apps, when you're designing things with Google, fix, class, fix the classroom so I, we can pin. I like, you know what? When, 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 when I get out of lockdown and, and I can go down the road back to Facebook, HP, Google, Dell, and all those companies, I will make sure some kind of way I'll, I'll integrate accessibility into the pitches that I give. I, I, I'm going to do my part, right? I'm, I'm going to do, I'm going to do more and just, just talk about it. I'm, I'm going to be about it. So, uh, on that note, Michelle, thank you again for joining me, uh, on this edition of it and live for those who tuned in, hopefully you saw the link for her podcast. Again, I will put that in the show notes so you can have availability to that. And you're, it's not just on, on, on Apple, right? You're, you're, it's kind of syndicated across multiple podcast platforms. So, um, iHeartRadio as well as Spotify. Nice. See that you where you need to be. You where you need to, so there's no excuse. All right, folks, there's no excuse. You have access you have the accessibility to the accessibility <laughs> podcast. I, I, I saw the jokes I got. I, I'm I'm not good at it right now. All right. So I appreciate you. Thank you very much. You guys, thank you again for joining in. Uh we will see you and talk to you very soon. Peace. And thank you for having me.